Hey, what's up everyone? It is BrickLover18 here, and today I am back at the West Edmonton Mall Lego store where I'll be building two customized Lego minifigures from the minifigure factory. This is the only minifigure factory here in Canada, so I'm super excited to get started and show you how this process works. So after you've purchased your custom minifigure pack from the cashier at the LEGO store, you head on over to the minifigure factory machines and get set up at one of these computers. At the computers, the LEGO store employee basically gives you a little bit of a rundown of exactly what to expect and how to use the machine, how to customize your minifigure, and then of course the process of printing it. So like I said, once you purchase your package from the LEGO store cashier, you're ready to go. You head on over to any computer that the LEGO store employee assigns to you, you get your minifigure pack ready, and you actually have to set it on the green tile here. But first, you are going to want to select your language, I'm obviously going to do English, and then you set the barcode on the tile there like instructed. Once your minifigure scans in, as you can see, it goes through this really cool animation kind of describing the entire process of the minifigure customization factory here at the LEGO store. Then you actually get started by adding your name. You can add whatever you want. I obviously just put my name as Brad and then you hit enter. Once you finish putting your name in, you can actually start designing your LEGO minifigure exactly how you'd like it. There are a ton of pre-selected torso options, the painting feature, the accessory slash sticker feature where you could add all the stickers and anything that you want. There were so many options that you could choose from, some exclusive to Edmonton and some pretty generic LEGO ones. You could scroll all the way down to the list there, find some seasonal ones as well. Uh, there was honestly just so many, it was pretty overwhelming and hard to choose. And then once we go back to the pre-selected options here, you can see some of the different ones they have there. Some are exclusive to the LEGO store, at the, like the minifigure factory, you won't be able to find them anywhere else. And some you can tell are clearly LEGO parts from other sets. They do have back printing as well on all of these, so you can choose a variety of different ones. And of course, because it's custom, you can mix and match. Once you've switched it over there, you can decorate both the front and the back of the minifigure because there will be special printing. The stickers are relatively the same. I actually don't think there was any difference, which totally makes sense because it's just the back, but there really were so many different options. One of the features I almost forgot to show is the text feature. So if you just wanna add any text or anything like that, to your minifigure torso, you can do that by adding it here. You can change the size, you can change the font, the boldness, the thickness, and you can also change the color, which is really cool. And of course, they've even got the paint feature where it allows you to be fully customizable and as creative as your heart desires. So basically, after spending quite a bit of time looking around and testing out all the features, I finally built the minifigure that I was pretty happy with. I wanted this one to represent my time at the LEGO store in Edmonton, so that's what the back looked like, and then we switched it around and this is what the front looks like. It was a lot of fun designing this minifigure and it didn't take me very long. This next minifigure here took me a lot longer than I thought it would to design, but this is ultimately what I came up with. It is an iteration of the LEGO store Edmonton minifigure, but on the front it says Brad Hart Bricks instead of the I Hart Edmonton. But you guys will be able to see these full minifigures designs in the video that I released yesterday. Once my designs were fully complete and approved by the LEGO store employees, I was able to hit the print button and send these over to the printers. Now normally while your minifigure is off printing, you would be choosing your accessories, but of course I wanted to film the printing process. All of the torsos get assembled into these yellow components here and set in the printer. You're able to actually track your progress on the screen above the printer and inside all the torsos go ready to be printed. Once the LEGO store employee hits the on button, the minifigures go inside to the actual printer itself. It was pretty slow watching this process happen, but it was still pretty cool watching the torsos just kind of disappear and get ready for printing. Then the magic started and the printer was off. The torsos are ready to be fully customized. It started out very slow at first, but then you could just sort of see the faint lines of the printing start to show up. Then it was really cool because I was able to find one of my torsos that being printed right then and there. It was pretty incredible to see something I designed five minutes ago on a computer was actually beginning to be printed in real life. Down at the other end of the printer was my other torso. Again, really, really cool to see this get printed and see my vision become reality. 
After the printer went over everything a few more times to make sure the ink was good, the LEGO store employee actually has to manually flip all the torsos so it can print on the back. She just flips them over right in the exact same place where they are and then reloads the machine and gets it ready to go for round two. Printing for the back goes the exact same as printing from the front. It takes the same amount of time because it's printing on torsos as well as that 1x3 brick. After they're done printing on the back here, the employee actually opens up a drawer underneath the printer and loads all of the printed torsos in. I think this was done to allow the printing to dry and set. Now that the printing's all done, I can finally build my actual LEGO minifigure by choosing all the accessories to go with it. Just like the build a minifigure wall, you get one hairpiece, one headpiece, one accessory, and one pair of pants. There was actually a ton of accessories that you could choose from at the LEGO store, tons of different iterations, and lots of selection. I was pretty happy with that and definitely could not complain. After the printing was dry, the LEGO store employee then started assembling the minifigure boxes for us. She put the brick in the very top there and added the torso to the bottom so each person could come collect it and then actually build the rest of their LEGO minifigure. While I was halfway through picking out my LEGO minifigures accessories, I was able to get my printed torsos and get ready to start assembling the minifigures. Like you saw in yesterday's video, the first minifigure I assembled was the LEGO Edmonton Skier as well as the Brad Hart Bricks minifigure. Alright guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video, giving you the full tutorial of the LEGO Store Minifigure Factory. I had such an amazing time building these two minifigures and it was such an incredible experience. If you're ever in a LEGO Store with the Minifigure Factory, I would highly recommend checking it out because you will not be disappointed. Like I said, if you're interested in seeing a bit more of these minifigures in a more close up detail, definitely check out the video I posted here on my channel yesterday so you get a way better glimpse of those minifigures. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and of course subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.